What's up guys, my name is Josh Washburn of Washburn Fab Co. Today I'm going to be doing a video a little bit different than what I normally do. We're going to be going out to a job in Lodi, California, and I'm going to just take you guys through it and show you what it's like and see if there's anything that you can learn off of this job. So today I'm only going to be taking pretty much the bare minimum required to do the job. I usually don't do that, but I know these guys that I'm doing the work for. I used to work for them. I was a manager at their shop. With that being said, I'm cool with the people there. They have tools there since it is a shop. I was able to see it on a FaceTime video before. So basically what it is is a railing on a pit where uh, big rigs drive over. Uh, it looks like somebody hit it or something and it's starting to split away. So yeah, let's get the truck loaded up and get out of here. So we're all loaded up, we're heading out, it's about a 20, 25 minute drive. It took me about 45 minutes to load up the truck. And these are things you gotta take into consideration when you're doing this for a side gig or this is your main source of income, is you gotta charge a minimum and your drive time. So what I do is a four hour minimum for mobile. And I know it took me 45 minutes to load, so it's probably gonna take me around that to unload. So that's an hour and a half of my time already right there plus 30 minutes there 30 minutes back you're looking at two and a half hours already say it takes me an hour and a half to finish finish the job there's your four hour minimum right there of course charge more if it goes over but you got to have a four hour minimum whenever you're doing this or else you'll quickly realize that you're not going to make any money i run a facebook group for small business welders and fabricators it's got like 16,000 people in it and i've seen people ask often do you charge for rollout time? Of course, you gotta charge. You gotta charge for everything. It's your time. You're there. You're. It's a part of doing the job itself. You don't have to worry about drive time and minimum so much, especially if you're on like a bigger job that you know you're gonna be coming back and back and back for days and weeks. I wouldn't worry about it too much at that point because you're gonna make money there. But when the actual job only takes a few hours, if you don't have a minimum, it's really not even worth going. So. I, I won't bother on too small of jobs if, you know, most people are willing to do the minimum if they actually need it done. If they're not too serious, then I just pass it on to the next guy because it ain't worth my time. As you can see from that time lapse video I did, I completely took the bare minimum of what I needed. Instead of taking my full mobile setup with my MPX 330 and my big reels and all that stuff, all I took was a 220 Harbor Freight generator and an art captain welding machine, which was only like 500 bucks and a thousand dollar generator. You don't need to go buy a $10,000 welder. Everybody wants a good welder and a nice truck. You don't need that stuff. I hardly do mobile. I bought a MPX 330 and all that fancy stuff. I have less than a hundred hours on it. I've had it for three years now because I always use this setup if I do mobile. And I don't hardly do mobile, so you got to progress your business and expand at the right speed and the right time so that you don't have all these bills for no reason. If you're not making crazy amounts of money where you're like, yeah, I need the power that the MPX 330 has or an SA has or a Bobcat, whatever. If you don't need it, need it, there's no reason to have that bill, which was a mistake I made early on in the beginning when I started. I bought that about two years into doing it. Uh, I was doing a lot of mobile at the time and then for whatever reason right after I got it It just seemed like the mobile all slowed down and the shop work all came up When it comes to welders and equipment I almost think that the brand names aren't any better than the lower brands like yes welder art captain In the beginning. I just thought okay. It's gonna be more reliable I'm gonna spend that extra money and get the Lincoln version. I've had a lot of trouble lately with the Lincoln 210 MP. It's been to warranty claim like four times now, I think. It's got some feeding issues and they're basically not helping me out with it, which is pretty well messed up because I can buy six or seven Art Captain and Yes welders instead of that one machine that failed me only after a couple months of use for the same price. I can have these machines just sitting on a shelf ready to go in case one of them breaks and send them in for a warranty while I use a different one. I, I don't know. 
it's up to you. You're paying for the name 90% of the time. But you do need to watch some reviews and make sure other people are using what you're using before you buy it. I first started using the more budget friendly welding machines after my Lincoln MP210 went down on a job. It blew the power supply. It was just out of warranty. Long story short, I didn't get that fix. Bought a new MP210 and was using that Yes Welder as a backup. Then that new MP210 took a shit again after only a couple of months. So I went back to using the Yes Welder and then I found out about Art Captain and Art Captain sent me this machine and at this point I've been running this Art Captain for, I don't know, five months or so. And that Yes Welder I've probably ran off and on for a total of a year and a half, two years. And I've had no problems whatsoever with either. And we're using them a lot. I must be using them enough if I keep breaking Lincolns. So, unless they keep just giving me shitty machines, I don't know. If and when you can, it's nice to do cool things for people. I got a dozen donuts for the guys that work at this shop. I know they'll appreciate it. I used to be here working with them. We always appreciated it when somebody that came in getting their truck worked on or whatever brought something. So right now I'm heading back over to the shop. I was able to get the outside bar straightened up, but there's two pieces to it. Uh, one of them was a six foot length of flat bar that was just too mangled. It would have probably taken a couple hours to sit there and try to work the bends out of it and get it put back into place. Or take an hour to drive there and back to the shop and just get a new piece. So sometimes you just gotta weigh out your options. Is it worth fixing something old or is it just worth getting a new piece for it but most of the time it's better to just get a new piece i would have brought new stuff to replace it with in the first go around but i never went and looked at it before starting it i just showed up and went to take care of it got our piece all cut out now we're heading back Just finished up over there one important message from this was this was a past employer and a lot of people will get all mad at their job and just be ready to drag up and just quit on the spot if you're trying to become a business person of any kind I don't care if it's welding related anything if you're working for a business that you can later in your new business provide value to never burn the bridge because if I did I would have missed out on a lot of work they called me every once a year or so since I left to take care of some work and I thought it was gonna be a one-day job and now it's gonna be added on to a two or three day job total so you never know what's gonna happen if you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this given some basic beginner business tips to the side of the welding and not showing so much welding let me know in the comments if nobody likes this stuff i'll just go back to doing reviews and stick with that don't forget about our giveaway at a thousand subscribers we're giving away a tig 200 from art captain and then i decided to do more of a giveaway than just that so at 750 we're going to do a custom sign two foot by two foot and at 500 
It's going to be pick a sign off the wall, whatever's on the wall pre-made at the time. You can pick from it. You can pick a couple if you like. But subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I'll leave the link in the description as well for the giveaway announcement video where you need to comment to be entered and all that. I'm thinking about doing some more in-depth videos from other welders from different areas because I would consider myself a, like a general fabricator. I don't really specialize in anything besides off-road products. But on that Facebook group I run, there's a lot of knowledgeable guys down there. And I've been thinking about trying to f select a few of them that would be interested in doing some interviews, whether it's online or in person if they're local. Um, and having people through my Facebook group ask, okay, this week we're talking about this. This is his niche, and this is what he does and makes money at and for so long. What do you want to hear from this guy? Do you want to hear about his struggles? Do you want to hear about the hardest part of getting into it? Whatever you want to hear. You can ask any question. If that sounds like something you guys would be interested in watching if I started doing, uh, drop a comment and let me know. If you currently own a welding business or are about to get started, my Facebook group will be in the description. If you're a business owner and you've been in business at least four or five years and want to be in one of these interviews that I plan on doing, shoot me an email at washburnfabco at gmail.com and we'll try to get in contact and set something up. I'm not, I'm not in a rush to do it. We'll do it whenever. If, if there's no interest in it, then I won't do it. But I think it sounds like a cool idea. As always, I'll have the links for all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, my affiliate programs, all that stuff down in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, guys.